Hello everyone, welcome to this new lecture under the same module. So, if you recall our discussion in the previous lecture, we discussed few numerical examples and the approach in those examples was mainly aimed at calculating the digester volume specific to some given feed material. So, in the today's lecture, we will also practice one numerical example with slightly a different approach in which we will try to calculate the amount of gas which is required to fulfill the energy requirement of a specific system. So, if you try to see the statement of the example here, so in this if you can see here there is a remote school which is having the following energy requirements means there is a school which has a following energy requirement in the school there are 8 lamps and each of the lamp having a 100 cp power that means cp indicates here the candle power and that operate for 5 hours a day that means the lamp which are there in the school are operational for 5 hours in a day and the candle power of each lamp is considered as a 100 cp. The school also has 5 computers and each of the computer is of 250 watt and these computers are also operating for 5 hours a day, but here it the energy requirement it is made by dual fuel engine driven generator that means the engine generator is being used to fulfill the energy demand of this particular 5 computers. Apart from that there is a 1.5 HP water pump which is also driven by dual fuel engine for 2 hours daily. So, here if you see the for each particular energy requirement the hours are also specified. So, with the help of these requirement now we need to calculate the total requirement of a biogas. So, if you recall our discussion in the previous lecture we used to always calculate only the volume of the digester. So, now in this example the approach is slightly different here we are trying to calculate the amount of gas which is basically required to fulfill the energy requirement of a specific system. So, here we have consider a system as a one school which is remotely located at some place. So, now based on that if you try to calculate the gas which is required to fulfill the demand of this specific equipment here. So, before that we need to do certain assumption. Say for example, the first assumption is the gas required gas required for lighting for lighting a 100 cp. So, cp in the sense here is as I mentioned it is a candle power lamp is 0 0.125 meter cube per hour. So, this is basically the gas requirement to light a single lamp. So, that is 0 0.125 meter cube per hour. So, the another assumption which is required in this case is that as you know here the computers which are operating for 5 hours in a day are basically driven by a engine generator. So, based on that we need to also assume the conversion efficiency conversion efficiency conversion efficiency of generator to be say 80 percent. So, in this example the generator efficiency is considered as 80 percent apart from that as we can see here there is a one water pump is also uh, required uh, and that is also driven by a dual fuel engine. Uh, so, in that case we also need to assume here the thermal efficiency thermal efficiency of engine.
to be say 25 percent. So, let us see how to calculate this energy requirement of a specific system one by one. For example, here if you try to see the gas which is required gas required for lighting purpose that is for lighting a lamp. So, now in the example it is mentioned that there are 8 lamps are there in the school and the gas required to light a single lamp it is given as 0 0.125 and each lamp is running for or operating for 5 hours say for example, it is 5 hours, but this is 5 hours a day. So, here the 0 0.125 is the requirement of gas per hour basis that is meter cube per hour and we have the 8 lamps in the school. So, based on that if you just try to multiply this value here, we will get the value in the form of 5 meter cube per day. So, day in the sense here is why it is in the day basis because the 5 hours per day is the energy requirement of this particular lamp. So, that is why 5 hours per day and here this particular value 0 0.125 is meter cube per hour. So, if you cancel this hour, we will have the meter cube per day as the unit. So, this indicates the gas required for lighting 8 lamps in a school on daily basis. So, this is the requirement of the specific gas for lighting a lamp in a school. So, apart from that to operate the 5 computers in a school, some electrical energy is required. So, how to calculate that electrical energy? So, let us see the electrical energy required by 5 computers right. So, there are 5 computers. So, how to calculate this energy required to operate these 5 computers? So, as we know there are 5 computers and we also know each computer is of 250 watt clear. So, this watt we can also represent in the form of say joules per second. These are the number of computers each computer is of 250 watt and this particular computers are also running for 5 hour. So, now this is in joules per second, this value is in 5 hour. So, simply if you multiply this and convert it into a 60 and convert it into a seconds. So, once we multiply these values, we will get a uh, answer in the form of 2, 2, 5 mega joule and this value it indicates the energy requirement of 5 computer in a school. But now to get this energy, how much thermal input is required to the driven generator that we need to calculate first because that value is nothing but input to the engine. Okay? So, if you consider this as the amount of energy which is required to run the computer. So, this is nothing but the input energy to the computer. Now, the amount of energy which is required to produce this much amount of power that also we need to calculate. So, how to calculate that particular value? So, for that we need to first assume So, assuming generator conversion efficiency generator conversion efficiency to be say 80 percent and this is the generator efficiency that we have considered that is 80 percent. Apart from that we also know the thermal we also know the thermal efficiency thermal efficiency of the engine that to be around 25 percent. 
if you need to calculate the thermal if you need to calculate the thermal input to the engine if you need to calculate the thermal input to the engine to generate Twenty two point five mega joule of electrical energy. That means, say for example, if you see here, this is the electrical energy requirement of a five computer. So now, to get this much amount of energy, what is the thermal input is required to the engine? that we can calculate with the help of this given efficiency simply what we have to do here is like this 22.5 if you divide it by the efficiency terms so we will get the answer so here this is nothing but the thermal input to the engine right so this is thermal input to the engine to generate 22.5 mega joule of electrical energy so once you calculate this value it comes out to be around 112.5 mega joule so this is basically the input energy which is required to generate 22.5 mega joule of electrical output power which will be fed into the computer system so that we can operate those computer system for at least 5 hours a day so this is very clear here now that this is the thermal input which is required to the engine so apart from this now the school also has one water pump right so now the mechanical mechanical energy required mechanical energy required for water pumping that we need to calculate so that so that we will come to know the amount of energy which is required for pumping this water so here we know that the capacity of the pump is given as 1.5 horsepower right so this is 1.5 hp now if you convert this horsepower into joules per second so the term comes out around to be like here conversion factor is 746 joule per second so the value exactly is 745.69 but we are just uh, taking a round of value of 746 joule per second and here also this pump is operating for 2 hours a day and once as this is in hours so again we are multiplying it by and converting it into a second so that this second will get cancelled here and we will get the value in the form of mega joule again or as I mentioned you can calculate it also in the kilojoule but here just for uh, keeping the uniformity of the example I am calculating all the values in the mega joule so once you multiply these values we will get the value in the form of say 8.05 mega joule right so now this is the mechanical energy which is required for pumping the water so now thermal efficiency thermal efficiency of engine is given as 25 percent it is given value in the example therefore the required thermal input 
thermal input we can also calculate the required thermal input to this particular system so that it will run the pump for 2 hours continuously so that can be calculated simply by dividing this particular value by 0.25 right so we'll get the value in the form of say 30 2.2 mega joule so now this indicates the thermal input to the engine so that it will give the output of around like 8.05 mega joule which will be used to run the or operate the pump right so this is the value which is specifically for running the pump or operating the pump so now based on these two values this is the one value which we have calculated for the operation of computers and this particular value is calculated to run water pump so these particular values are basically the electrical energy input which is required for the computer as well as to run the water pump so with the help of this if you just try to see the total total thermal input required by engine so that is nothing but 112.5 mega joule and then 32.2 mega joule so if you just take the sum of this it is coming to be around like 144.7 mega joule so this is the total thermal input which is required by the engine so this is input to the engine just try to understand this this is input to the engine so based on the conversion efficiency as well as the thermal efficiency of the engine we'll get the required output and that output is required to run the computer as well as to run the water pump so now once we know this total thermal input which is required by the engine apart from this we also calculated at the beginning the gas required right so we have calculated the gas required for for lighting purpose so that is around 5 meter cube per day so now this value is in mega joule and we already calculated the gas required for lighting purpose is around like 5 meter cube per day so accordingly we need to convert this value also in meter cube per day so that once we know this value and its amount in meter cube per day so we will come to know the total gas which is required to run this system so how to convert this value into meter cube per day now so for that purpose we need to assume we need to assume heating value of biogas so in this case we are assuming the heating value of biogas as 23 mega joule per meter cube so now once we know this heating value of biogas so with the help of this heating value of biogas we can calculate the total gas which is required to run the electrical system that is to run the five computers as well as to run the one water pump in the school so how to do that we can simply calculate the required volume of by gas for the engine so as this is the because this value it indicates the total thermal input required by the engine so if you use this particular value here that is 144.7 mega joule and if you just divide this heating value here 
that is in the mega joule per meter cube right. So, once you divide this we will get the value in the form of 6.29 meter cube. So, as this entire calculation is on daily basis. So, this is basically the the gas which is required by the engine. Okay. So, this is specifically for the engine and for lighting purpose we also calculated the amount of gas which is required. So, based on that if you just try to calculate the total daily requirement of biogas. So, that is nothing but 5 plus 6.29. So, the total is 11.29 meter cube. So, this is total amount of gas which is required to operate lamps computer and the water pump in the school. So, with this now it is very much clear here like how to calculate the specific gas requirement for a specific system here. So, with the help of this uh, it gives us a different approach that how to calculate the gas required for operating a specific unit either computer, lamp or the water pump. So, with this uh, I guess uh, we will end our lecture here. So, in the next lecture, we will start our new module that is module number 9. Regarding this lecture, if you have any query, you can email me at the given email id on the screen. Thank you.